So, beautiful and red, blonde, no chill for the soul. Tea, drink with ham and bread. Captain Von Trapp. Yes. I was just doing Elton John as Captain Von Trapp. Maria. You can tell everybody. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacy J. Aswan. Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. We are so excited because we are back with part two with our pal Kiff Vanden Heuvel. Let's get buzzed, everybody. What was it that led you to move to LA? I've always wanted to. Always. But there had to be something that happened that said, okay, the I got to go, I'm going The inciting out. incident was... Ooh, I like inc it's the incident. Yeah, this the is good. The inciting incident was... Um, the restraining order. No, <laughs> no. It, was, it was a conversation with my wife. Ah. That it was it was very very clear, and uh, I mean moving to Los Angeles from, oh, it's not it isn't even about the dream, right? Like it's the plan. It's mm -hmm. a plan. It's a yes. plan. Yes. You know, you, you guys are both not from Los Angeles, but yes. there was yeah. there was a moment that you were like, I'm gonna give it a shot. Yeah. And, and I, I had a plan. Yeah. Right. Even at 13. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. He, he did. Yeah. He yeah. Did. yeah. yeah. And you've nailed that plan. Well. <laughs> yeah. Right. I had a plan. Yeah. yeah. Plan. So my plan was get out here by all means, by any means necessary. Yeah, you had intention. Totally. Yeah. I didn't have resources uh, or connections. And I came out for a semester when I was 21 in the Los Angeles Film Studies Center and stayed at Oakwood Apartments and mm. interned at a talent agency and thought I was going to be on the track of being like, a, I was going to be a director. I was going to be a, you know, a. My energy. I wasn't. I've, I've been doing improv, but I was like, I'm gonna. But I'm gonna be a series director. I'm gonna be. You know, I yes. want to tell. I want to tell meaningful stories. My my scores will be by Tom Waits, and my my DP <laughs> will. It'll look like Jim Jarmusch films. Uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna be doing. It could, um, it could still happen. It still could happen. It, still could happen. <laughs> it could happen. I, I may, I've made some very very pretentious one, one stop man motion. Can do, well, one man can do, another. another can do. And just because Jim Jarmusch can make. That's right. He oh. makes wonderful comedies. I yes. love the dead won't die. Anyway, uh, so I did that. I was out here for four months. And during that time, worked at a talent agency mm. and saw and watched, you know, uh, actors come in and got to a taping of Cheers and like all this stuff and was like, oh, I'm coming out. So I graduated and, I, and I, in, in that final semester in, in Michigan, back at my school at Calvin College, uh, I ended up uh, falling for a girl and staying. Mm. And then we stayed. I, I just don't think she was for L.A., and as much as I wanted to come out here and draw that momentum, it just wasn't right for that marriage. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that marriage ultimately didn't work out. Um, but what it did accomplish is it got me close enough to realize what I really wanted to be doing. Mm -hmm. and during that time, I became- Which was be single. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm highly monogamous. Uh, but but the, um, what I really wanted to do, what, what I was doing, honestly, during yeah. that time was uh, production. Mm -hmm. So I became proficient in Photoshop, in um, in in audio production, mm -hmm. in motion graphics, and all the things that have suited me incredibly well in this world of self taping. Yes. So like I became comfortable with the camera and all that. Um, so anyway, uh, went to Detroit, started doing Second City, and then it was like, well, I want to get out to L.A., but but there's the stage, and it'd be great to get an equity job, and then SAG, and then like all the things. So um, when we finally made it out to Chicago. We, we had the money in place. I had three national campaigns, both on camera and voiceover. I had representation in Los Angeles. I had all the things in place. So when you mm -hmm. came out for real, you had, you some had stuff going that, Those place. were the conditions yeah. that I really wanted to have in Good place. Good for I wanted you, to have, man. I, See, had you come out earlier. Right? Right. Nothing. <laughs> Either nothing or I would own this. <laughs> totally. Yeah, I, mean, I don't think that'd be the case. So, I think I'd no, be an associate you, producer. But you, yeah. you came out with some some irons in the fire. Yes. As opposed to coming out here with a blank slate, which, listen, you still would have succeeded. There's no question. It's in your DNA. Thank you. But how nice that you had some stuff like percolating just, before you got here. 100%. Yeah. I mean, just talking about it now, realizing that while growing up, I had the clear goal, and the clear goal was just the L.A. logo. Mm -hmm. um, coming out right after college, it was still just the LA logo. Yeah. But being able to be working professionally in a market like Chicago, doing right. high quality, national, recognized work, Super Bowl spots, the whole nine yards, 
Um, I did a show at the Goodman, like, like just really being able to flex my, my range, both my comic and dramatic experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then being able to say, okay, the conditions are right. The relationships are in place. Yeah. Let's the, the lease is up. Let's the lease is up. Yeah. The lease is up. Yeah. And we were living and the, the, the building we were in, we, cause I was ready to move a year before and Sherry for, for whatever reason was like, you know what? I'm not. Mm -hmm. And we love the building we're in, but I'm not quite ready. And I don't know what that is, but I'm, I'm like, I'm going to honor that because who knows? Yeah. And then we, we moved to another apartment and that apartment was a brand new construction that had enough problems in it that by the time our lease was up, it was like, <laughs> see ya. Time to go. Yeah. 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 And, but uh, I just, I think it's such a great example. You have great examples of that. We all have examples of that where the timing is just right. Yes. Yeah. When it's, and so sometimes we just have to surrender, which is powerful and just say, yeah. and, and honor and listen and watch all the things that are happening or not happening around right. us yeah. and say, okay, I'm going to really acknowledge and and here you come to LA and you have momentum. Yeah. Yes. And I, which is I, makes you unique. It totally. Makes you stand Absolutely. Out. I'm having conversations right now with 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 talent that are like, oh yeah, man, I'm gonna be moving out there in three months or I'm moving out there in July. And you know, and my first question is always, do you have a plan? Because if you don't have a plan, you're gonna crash. Like a lot of people think. They're new into business, A, so they're yes. not even, you know, an amazing actor, you know, and been doing like things that you you were doing, but they're new yeah. in the industry. They don't have a job here. They think they're going to come out, get an agent two weeks later, no then savings. a week after that, right? they're yeah. going to make a, an animation demo, and then two weeks later, they're going to be on an animated series. Dude, you can burn through. I don't care how <laughs> I don't care how big you how big your your bankroll is. You can burn through ten grand like that, like uh, that, like yes. that, and like between between apartment plus security deposit plus car, car plus insurance, a, yeah. name it, food, restaurant, go meet people, all the other things. And like, I'm a big advocate for coming out here, but come out here strategically. You really do need to have that have that in place. And if you're not working where you are. LA is not going to solve your problems. Right. There are commercials. There are ad agencies in Toledo, Ohio. Thank God. That's where I started. Yeah. The on hold messaging in Toledo, Ohio. Mm -hmm. But like I worked in that market, which helped me make the transition to a little bit larger market. Right. Which really helped that momentum to another yeah. larger market. And then yeah. when you get to a place where you're like, there's a ceiling here. Yeah. And uh, and I can, you know. And, yeah. an, and an abundance of talent. That's right. 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 A tremendous yeah. amount. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and I, I want to see, we say it all the time, I want to see how high I can jump. And Absolutely. the other line I mentioned for Patriot Games, like, I didn't want to come out here with my head in my hand. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to have to knock on a lot of doors to try to get seen to show my wares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, it was really helpful to have representation yeah. in place. So <laughs> what are some of your favorite celebrity oh, impre man. impressions? And and go through a couple of them. And then also, like, do you have, like, a formula to get down a voice or uh, breaking it down? Or? Let's let's do them side by side. So okay, let's do one and talk about how how we found it. Yeah. Okay, that beautiful. Help? So yeah. let's yeah. kind of break it down a little bit. I love that. You guys are going to dig moment. this. Is it's, it all right if I use this book? Yes. Of course. Right. So questions for the game of life. If So yeah. this this will give me uh, content or or content. Oh, yeah. Here. To use. Oh, do you want these? Ooh, these what are, are those? Okay. What do you want me to read you a question? Well, yeah. Do you want to see uh, the read question? me a question? Well, uh, I was what I was going to do was read the copy as uh, as the celebrity, but oh, I okay. prefer to answer the question as celebrity. That's great. Okay. So first, which who do you want to give? Or do hear you want to read the question? Whoever you you want to give us. Okay, well, let's do a Gene Wilder. Gene okay, Wilder's going to be loud. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What Gene? Hi Gene. Hello. What bridges in your life do you need to burn ASAP? If there was a bridge that I needed to burn, it would have to be the one that is keeping me from going to my favorite Thai restaurant where I can find the most delicious lemongrass chicken. Now, so the thing with... <laughs> So <laughs> I can totally picture his face. Oh. No, I can't do Gene Wilder no, talking. No, but I can picture it by hearing the voice. Yes. So cool. Now, when you're doing, first of all, when you're doing someone who, I mean, the first movie I saw in a movie theater was Young Frankenstein. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Right? Yeah. yeah. 
And set that bar high, man. Oh man. And his like he was a constant throughout throughout our life. And I remember when Gene passed, like, can I do this dialect? Mm. I remember watching Jim Meskimen do this beautiful tribute to yeah. Robin Williams. And mm-hmm. I was like, well, what what doing the impression allows you to do is keep keep this person in our lives oh, and alive. Yes, remember, yes, that's a beauty. Yes. So so that's part of the reason I like to play with Gene. I don't you know book with him, but like so I found that space. Like what I've always found funny about him is that it's hysterical. It's in that it's that that didn't even sound like him, but like that you work your way into this place and find like finding where your voice breaks. So like exactly. where that is, and then just kind of noodling around in there until you find that frequency that's like, oh, that sound is reminiscent of him. Yeah. Right. So right. like what is what's upsetting him? And it's fun to play the game of I'm upset by little things. Right. Um, mm-hmm. So that's, that's I love doing Gene Wilder. That's, it's, a it's funny. Great like, impression, it, it man. It doesn't hurt my voice when I go into that space. It's yeah. in that kind of soft Yeah, way. yeah. What's which another? Is fun, which is fun, though, when you're creating unique characters is you can add that essence of him yes. and flavor it in yeah. with a little. A totally. Thing. It was like you were talking with the Vince Vaughn uh, yes. before, where like when you do Vince Vaughn, it's not just that you're here talking like this, right? But that you're bringing in, I got to give it up to the, the to the little guys with the big digital hearts well, who like the, went above and beyond. You know hey, Vince. Yeah, it's, it's the Vince, verbiage, too. We, yeah, right? that's yeah. right. Yeah, totally. Well, Vince, this is a good question for you. Sure. Uh, Vince. What lie do you keep telling yourself? The lie that I keep telling myself is that is that I'm a bad person. Because I'm not a bad person. You're I got not. a giant, I'm, I'm incredibly generous. <laughs> I, I go across, I go above and beyond every time I have the opportunity. <laughs> I tip 45%. I always put the I put the shopping carts back. You know, I, I don't even leave them in the I don't leave them in Ralph's, right? I put them in the cart corral. That's where they go. So because you, that's what you do. You're a little bit of a people pleaser, huh? I'm a people pleaser, that's you know, and that's perfect. and that, if that's a fault, then that's a fault. But you okay. know what? It's a fault I can sleep with. Oh my with. god, that's so good. <laughs> so like that's the thing though, it's like you gotta find everything you just said is he completely, would say. Yes. I love that. It's finding the game of him. Of the game of him. Right? And that's yeah. that's really I think the the key to doing a good impression. Like yeah. and with voice matching, it's different because it's not so much about the impression, it's about matching, but then right. acting like them to, right. exactly. to round out that right. story. Yeah. You know? right. Yeah. Right. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Michael Keaton. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love him so much. Michael, yeah. what are you addicted to? Uh, <laughs> look. <laughs> so, what am I addicted to? I mean, there's, first of all, there's, I can't talk about that. There's a bazooka bubble gum, first of all, which, come on, huge fan. Then uh, uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Popcorn Chicken. I mean, that's a, that's a stupid thing to say. Uh, forget that. Listen, if I'm addicted to anything, uh, it's uh, it's it's being here with you guys on VO Buzz Weekly. How about that? <laughs> nice. So like that was a good one. Keaton came from Beetlejuice, like mm-hmm. right, Beetlejuice you... and Batman, 88, 87, 86, yeah. like. Michael and I already love Night Shift, but those right. I, I wanted to be in. So then it was about, you know, like I don't even. I've never really I'm silly like worked on the on the voice. Yeah, you know, it's just yeah. all oh the facial. Shit. Yeah, no, yeah. no, it's really, really good. Yeah. And you know, but but what, what I one of the things that I feel <laughs> makes a great impression yeah. is when a yeah you totally put on the mask. Yes, like mm-hmm. you said earlier, but also you exaggerated a little bit. Because yeah. people want to hear that, you know? Totally. The little exaggerations yeah. of the character, just yeah. a little bit more, you know, like a little bit more salt on it. Just a little mm. bit. Yeah, man. Just a little bit to heighten it. And then if I'm matching them, then it's way more then like, it's, yeah, then, then it's have... like, all right, look, so Spider-Man, I'm going to have a hard time. Exactly. You know what yes. I mean? And it's not as dynamic. So a lot of times because of like Harrison, because I do Harrison Ford, yeah. a lot of times people will be like, oh, you do Harrison Ford? Let me hear your Harrison Ford. And you're like, we're in a bar. You'll never hear it. Yeah. yeah. So then I'm like, no. all right, so stand really close. <laughs> oh, I'm this like, is perfect for Harrison. Uh, sure. Because sure. it's Harrison. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's the funniest thing your inner child wants? Do you have one, Harrison? Uh if there's the funniest thing that my inner child wants, uh, it's this. First of all, make certain that whatever you do, you. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> 
I got to meet him. I had so good. Uh, yeah, like not just meet. Yeah. Like you ever this is so nerdy. You, uh, you ever so have what? those you ever have those hangout dreams where you dream like you're hanging out with a celebrity for yeah. like a, for like three hours? Yeah, you're yeah. driving around town, like with the top down. Just me bugs. and me and Robert Redford, like kicking it, <laughs> you know? Yes. So, so that's my Harrison Ford story was ex- <laughs> no, we know exactly like that. Dreams. I know. Really? We, I, I directed a show at Second City. Harrison Ford's goddaughter was in the show. Oh. He came to see it. And then afterwards, you guys all, went for a ride. We all went for a ride. We actually all went for a short walk down Did the Did you do the impersonation of him to him? I couldn't do him yet. Yeah. Oh. Okay. I couldn't really do him. Uh, and, and like, I hadn't really tried. Like, there were things about him that I knew, but my voice wasn't in a place where I could yeah. sustain that depth yet. Yeah. Yeah. And when I, when I did, when I, where I found him was chasing Han Solo. Uh, mm. When I, I played Han Solo in a cartoon called Forces of Destiny, Star Wars Forces of Destiny. Yeah. And that audition, I spent three days just... Yeah. Oh, Han Solo, Han Solo, trying to find it and trying to, like, there's a lot of guys who do Harrison, but yeah. it was mm-hmm. just trying to find, you know, the range and uh, the the heat yeah. of the, uh, this, I will destroy that. But yeah. then also, uh, the father. This, yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 exactly. Listen, kid, I don't know. There's mm-hmm. a yeah. real shucks yeah, to yeah, him. Yeah. yeah, there's more than one note to him for sure. Totally. For so sure. good. That is a sweet this is So good. So good. Oh, my gosh. So this career yes. makes us lunatics. No, there's a roller coaster yeah. about it. Yes. Your wife is an actor. Yes. You know, you're, you've been an entertainer for a long time. So what keeps you jazzed about going back day after day to do it? Uh... I owe the seven-year-old kid who was stuck in Cutlerville, Michigan, who was bullied and wanted to do this stuff and wanted to... Um, Are you talking about you? Like, were yeah. you were bullied? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I can never imagine that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, was a, I love my hometown. I really do. I love the people I grew up with, but I, I didn't fit. You were like the unicorn, huh? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, and I, I, unicorn is a really is a really sweet way to put it. Uh, well, I was I was the um, I have I have a strange first name. I was Kiff ever since I was very very little, mm. and and I loved cartoons and I loved doing them. And when I expressed myself on the schoolyard in particular in, in kindergarten, first to second grade, mm. um, that was not well received by, by older kids. Most of my classmates tolerated me, but I wasn't a class clown or anything. So, um, you know, I dreamed of, because uh, I could do Daffy Duck and I uh, was value programming on Looney Tunes cartoons and Hanna-Barbera cartoons. And that was, it was funny and it was reckless. And it was anything but what our space was, Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and um, I'm the oldest of five boys and the, my brothers directly behind me are twins. So they kind of had each other. And then, and then, uh, so like there, I, I always felt a little bit alone mm-hmm. and the television and the films, you know, it's like, what is it like being there and that kind of stuff. Like it was, it was, it was. It wasn't just an escape, man. I, I always bristle at the idea that entertainment is an escape. Yeah. Like to me, it was a doorway, man. It was a path. Yeah. And then when I got when I got Springsteen, when I got Springsteen seventy five to eighty five live, when that album dropped, mm-hmm. and I heard "Growing Up," it was like, oh my god. He's like, singing to me. Yeah. It was it was that when he says to the audience, you know, one of you wanted a doctor, the other one a lawyer. They, oh yeah, Bruce, you should uh, you should become a doctor. You get a little something for yourself and. No, 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 you should become a lawyer. You, you get some little, some little something for yourself. And he said, what they didn't understand is I wanted all of it. Mm. Uh, so tonight you're just going to have to settle for rock and roll. And like that, the spirit and momentum and energy of escape paired with rock wasn't my passion, but, but doing everything in this business was. And there was also like a pretty pretty tight sort of layer around the idea of a young covenant youth, you know, who's the grandchild of two ministers in the Christian Reformed Church, two uncles in the Christian Reformed Church, oh boy. Uh, pursuing this kind of work mm-hmm. that's not doing 
either mission work or or being a member of the of the uh, of the ministry. And we certainly could go watch movies, but we didn't participate in that. Right, right. The one guy from my town who did uh, was Paul Schrader, who is the the screenwriter who wrote uh, Taxi Driver and mm. Raging yeah, Bull. Yeah. Brilliant movie, Raging First Bull, Reformed. Man. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And First Reformed with Ethan Hawke yeah. from last year. Great. That, I mean, that that town, that that city is very much what Grand Rapids is like, or what at least my part of it. Yeah. Um, so it was it was a thick sort of battle, and I'm really grateful for my college, which is a Christian liberal arts college. Um, and even though the education stuff that I got there was liberal, liberal artsy mm-hmm. with a handful of acting classes, it was a community that was very supportive of saying, no, 100%, you should go out there. You should yeah. go, go be you. Yeah. There, that's not forbidden for you. Mm-hmm. And that once that happened and my parents got on board with that philosophy, Boom. then it was, yeah. yeah. Then, then the opportunity, then I really kind of came into myself in a way that, you know, people would say, "No more bullying after that." You were that. unstoppable. I had a you got a fight. That's right. Fight. You learned how to fight after that. No, right? I had a fight. Oh, you I learned fight. how to fight in movies, and then I mm. had a fight my freshman year of high school that ended all oh. of it. Mm. It was, it was, it was a bad. Fight. Very Liam Neeson, Chuck. It was a very Liam Neeson. I had a certain set of skills, <laughs> and I used them. <laughs> and I used them in that on that day, yeah. but it put an, it put an end to all of that stuff and what what emerged. Huh. Just reflecting on it now makes me realize that what it was suppressing was my confidence. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then and, th- and you just opened that. Yeah. It was like a drill, that fight, like drilled through all of that crap that was blocking it, and then it shot out because of that pressure. Mm-hmm. And then uh man. Know. And then so you're you you've been unstoppable ever since. Amen Pretty much. to that, baby. I mean, working. Working. Yeah. And I, I'll uh, you know, from from the I'll, I'll say this, like. Nothing makes me smile more than when I go to uh, an IMAX movie and they have that opening bit, you know, when they're counting down the giant numbers. And mm-hmm. But then it goes, uh, watch a movie or be part of one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like that, like the first time you see your name in a credit on a feature. Oh, man. Even if it's, you know, if you're, you know, look, if you're like, because like, I love Zack Snyder. I'm a huge Zack Snyder fan. And I got to work on Batman versus Superman and work with him. And like, like that was just, it was the top of the mountain, man. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. you know, it was yeah. me and a batarang <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a burned out house in Detroit. And it was like, yeah. uh, br- we're breaking for lunch. And then everyone went to lunch, you know, 2 a.m. And it's yeah. lunch. And, but it's just me and this batarang in a Batman movie. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. they, these are sort of fragment like pictures that are floating yeah. through. As totally. floating what I mean, what are some of your highlights? I was just going to ask them it's... that. <gasps> um, some of my highlights versus uh, like whether it's voiceover or on camera for you, like to date. Highlight jobs, professional that professional credits. That, I'll, I'll yeah. give you this: the the jobs are all or great moments. in different ways. Yeah, moments. Yeah. Moments is exactly where I'm going. Yeah, that moment with with Zack Snyder on the porch. In in uh, in Detroit with the Batarang, and then Mason and I uh, play the other cop um, on that porch, getting ready to go in there, and Zach coming over to us, the two of us, mm. and Zach and him going, "All right, guys, what are we what are we saying in this scene? What are we doing?" So why don't you, Kiff? Why don't you hold this this flashlight, and our camera will follow you, and like just make we're, it felt like we were back in you school, were we we're screwing around with cameras, yeah. totally. And he was mm-hmm. like, "I, I love doing that. That was a great moment." Um, I got to be on Richie Rich on this Netflix yes. series. Yeah. And like just every day on that show was extraordinary because I got to work with these wonderfully talented, hilarious children who have grown into wonderfully talented, hilarious adults. Mm-hmm. And to be, you know, making the decision at the outset to say, I'm not like, I, yes, I'm an adult on the set, but I'm not, I'm not an authority figure to you. Right. I'm, I'm right. your castmate. Oh, your energy with the kids. I mean, it was so, you were like just this big, giant, great kid yeah. along with them. It was great. And being able to be that way, but then also be a safe place for them to come. Mm-hmm. Um, other, other moments. Uh, my first animated thing that I did was for Tom and Jerry. Mm-hmm. And I was recording over, I think, over at Mark Grau. And we're in the booth. And uh, there was a moment where we had recorded something. And he said, all right, stand by. And it was just me in that silence in that room. And I had taken classes with Fraley in that space. Mm -hmm. But like, I remember looking at the ground and seeing like, this is, this is where you have been working to get. Yeah. Uh, The moment 
doing the Pirates of the Caribbean with Gray and Mark Grau again, mm -hmm. and being in the at Imagineering and doing the auction scene from Pirates. Oh man! Yeah. And we had done it like four or five times, and and then <laughs> they said, "All right, uh, hold on, we're gonna try to put something together." And I remember looking at Gray and Mark, and we were all beaming. Yeah. And then I got sad. And I was like, like Let me you got sad. I, know, I, did. When it's I got over. sad because it was like, oh my God, you guys, they might have it. Yeah. That moment yeah. where it's like, that's why we're there, but it was still like all the buildup. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's what happens when you I get know, stuck sometimes on the it's first like, take. You sort of want to be like, I kind of want to mess up because I don't. You're like, yeah. oh, Can I really? Blow up? It's over? Yeah. Can it go on longer? Riding an elevator with Dan Aykroyd what? as a Ghostbusters fan. While we're mm. shooting behind the candelabra, oh, and we had man. shot stuff already, and there was a bit that was supposed to take place in the elevator, so the camera's low. It's just like that same yeah. shot where he's like, "Well, um, you know, <laughs> what is the line? I blame myself. That's Egon. You know, why worry? Each of us wearing an unlicensed nuclear accelerator on our back. That was it. Yeah, but like, and if if there was one regret, <laughs> Dan Aykroyd, uh, we we rode the van to set, and then Dan Aykroyd was riding shotgun, and he got out of the car. And, and then he jumped out. And I'm such a Saturday Night Live, Blues Brothers, Ghostbusters, Second City alumni, yes. a massive fan of Dan yes. Aykroyd, of like all of them. And he gets out <laughs> and he opens the door and he's like, all right, uh, if you need a hand. And, and I take his hand with my dainty left hand <laughs> and hold it as I step out of the van like a princess. That's a good one. What a High memory, watermark. man. High there watermark. You go. Totally. And then every chance I had, I had plenty of opportunities <laughs> to talk to Dan about Second City, about other stuff. Uh, but I didn't. I it, never but said. But there was the dialogue that was unsaid. It's what you didn't say. That's you it. had that, you I know. I think that's it. That's, what, we're that, gonna, Matt, that's what we want Matt for Damon you. and I had I a great time. I had a wonderful yeah. time talking to, to Steven yeah. Soderbergh. But when it came to Aykroyd, I was cold sweat. Yeah. Mm. And if I had, if, if, and in all honesty, like if I had a, if I had a regret, it's not. It's not saying to him, hey, man, you, you know, a and huge it, impact yeah, yeah, you really did. Yeah. You yeah. introduced me to the blues. Yeah. In a, in a like the, my first celebrity meeting was I interviewed B.B. King in college. And it's because mm. of Aykroyd introducing right. that right. to yeah. to to me down here. Yeah. Well, maybe, Dan, you're watching. Maybe. Uh, what would you say to Dan now if he's watching? Yeah. Um, Don. Don. Let me just say. Don. Uh, I'll, I'll speak. <laughs> I'll do Aykroyd's uh, dialogue. Yeah. First of all, there's nothing tastier than the smooth, clean, crisp taste of Crystal Head Vodka. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's absolutely true. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I've always been a huge fan. Uh, I've always been a huge fan. Um, and, uh, and your work continues to inspire me to this day. I had a cardboard. Remember at Blockbuster, they had these cardboard stand-ups? Yes. Yes. I would go to Blockbuster when the movie would it, come off the oh. hot sheet and be like, what are you guys going to do with that? Yeah. And they'd be like, we're just going to put it in the dumpster. Oh. Like, Can I have that? So I had a little shop of horror standy in my bedroom. And, uh, and the best Dan. of Dan Aykroyd, the Saturday Night Live, uh, where he's doing the Decabet. And the bassomatic, it's a bassomatic. That whole bit. So good, so good. Anyway, oh Aykroyd. my God, so good. Oh, um, so I love that. Switching, switching gears. Yes. Dan, Kiff, <laughs> Harrison, Michael. Kiffy. Yeah. Kiffy. Vince. Um, <laughs> okay, so you're a dad. Yes. To a real life child. A real life child. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And she's actually yours. Yes. Um, but what, what advice do you, what's the best advice do you think a parent can give to a child in this time mm. of the life of the world? Oh, we're getting deep now. Hallelujah. I'm gonna, two things. One, um, the, the best, the only advice I can really give her is, you know, risk. Risk. See, you know, see how high you can jump. Mm. Um, don't, don't, uh, don't let things that make you nervous stop you from exploring the fullness of what you can be. Um, and if you bump up against something that's too big, I got, I got mitts. Yeah. And that's what I'm here for. Yeah. Um, I like the idea of our little family is we're our own sort of Avengers team. You yeah. know what I mean? And we've yeah. all got our that's own important. sort of powers. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And then, and then the other thing is, I, I don't know why this is coming up, but it is, it was, um, 
Marilyn Manson was being interviewed by Michael Moore in the movie Bowling for Columbine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I remember Michael asking Marilyn that similar question. And his response was, I wouldn't say anything, man. I just listen. Mm -hmm. and, and that really struck me. That idea of, you know, I want to know what's, because she's at that age now where she's turning 13 and she loves the stuff she's doing. Yeah. And like, you know, even in the car in the morning, it's like we get in the car and headphones and music. And so like there is that, that aspect of I'm at a place where, where not I'm, she's going through the stuff that she needs to. Because yeah. when I was that age, I found the, I got the Walkman mm. and I got Bruce Springsteen and I went boom. Yeah. yeah. I got Eddie Murphy and I went boom. And those are the things that are inspiring me. Yeah. And I, I as much as I want to engage, mm -hmm. she is not my thing to do. Yeah. It is my responsibility to give her the space to discover what inspires her and support that. Even if it feels like a loss and I feel like uh it might feel temporarily like a loss in the in the way everything grows, like the way it's like, oh, these shoes don't fit anymore. This is a loss. Um, it's a different kind, but, yeah. it, but it's also like taking her to see Blade Runner 2049 and her falling in love with, with Roger Deakins photography and Skyfall, yeah. like all the kind of stuff that you're like, oh, this little kid yeah. is so fascinating. So yeah. I guess, I guess, uh, if, if there is, you know, that, that's my, my, uh, I think I that's it. beautiful I and, and, and so good. Well, I'm the youngest of five girls. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I have an amazing right. mother, but I have an incredible father. Who, so I love that your daughter has that in you because, you know, it's like you give your kids wings yeah. Yeah. and you got to let them try them at some but, point, you know, which is hard. It's hard. Yeah. Which is hard. Your, your parents did the same thing with you. Yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. Stacy comes from a medical family uh, and they never pushed, say, oh, no, you have to become a doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like they, they got... let her develop into what she wanted yeah. to do. And then whatever she wanted to do, they said, okay. If that's what you want to do, we're going to support you 100%. I mean, mm -hmm. aren't we lucky to yeah, be able to yeah, have but, but, but that but level of That's support? important, man. But it's you important. Know, you want to guide and, you know, kick yeah. them into the, the lane when they're getting a little out and everything, sure. everything like that. But, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, no, not knocking my parents or anything like that. I didn't really have that. Mm. Like, nobody kind of really guided me. Yeah. Um, I just had to kind of, like, figure it out yeah. and then kind of, like, go for it. Uh, I, I wish that I did have that, you know, because yeah. uh, turned out pretty good. Chuck. Well, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. we all have a different situation, yeah. but yeah, right. yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you for sharing. I love of course. that. Thank you for sharing. Um, that. That's awesome. What is uh, what's something about you that would surprise people to know? Oh. Uh. <laughs> That's surprising, right there. Yeah, that. That you're an introvert. You know, that, 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 I'm, introvert. that I'm actually an introvert. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. Maybe uh, I'm a kidney donor, but I don't know if that's necessarily surprising. That is surprising. Uh, I donated a kidney to my dad in 1998. Really? It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, that's not Dude. something you hear every day. We no. Can, we, can, we, can, we can end kidney disease. The impact on me is minimal. I mean, I, uh, to the point where... To the point where I did a bit on a show that never made it to air, and I wish it had. I did a, I did a, I played a like a, a German tourist in a speedo, um, <laughs> on a show called We Are Men. Let's um, YouTube that. But, uh, yeah, it never made no, it to I air, know. and I was, oh. and I was bummed because. What, Jeff has his speedo on now. He would I like do. to recreate just, it. <laughs> tear away. <laughs> no, nah, man. I donated a kidney. I have a, mm. I have a scar on my belly, and they cast me in a speedo. Like that, to me, that was the win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. proudly showed my gut in that way because, you know, it was in the early days of laparoscopic surgery, right, which is right. now like, and they were going to cut me originally from either the top of my groin to the top, to the bottom of my sternum or around back, like a big, like shark's bite. And that would, you know, it would be a specific audition call out, but it might right. be the kind of thing that would be like, thanks. We loved your read, but. Um, you know, so the fact that my mother was willing to, not willing, like actively sought it out as an option, mm -hmm. um, because they just weren't doing it where we lived, Yeah. yeah. Um, but they did it in Baltimore. But I'm telling you, man, wow. we went in on a Friday. I was out on Monday, walking around the inner Harbor of Baltimore, 
like that that level of impact. Wow. And like if it if it comes to you, if it if if kidney donation touches you in any way or you know, you're facing that challenge like one of my one of my students at Second City just went through it with with her mother and like it's, you know, the 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 network of people who've gone through it are incredibly yeah. supportive. Yeah. They're like the voiceover community in a right, lot of ways. Yeah. Right. You know, it's like, oh, you're going to do that. That's amazing. And I it's a it's a it's a complicated emotional thing, but mm-hmm. it's also, um, you know, I don't know. It's it's a cool thing that that, um, you know, that it's a, it's you know, they, it's, it's the cliche of it's the gift that keeps giving. And it well, certainly but does. My gosh, I was going to say, does. like, what but, bigger gift could you give wow. somebody? Oh, sure. Yeah. What, a, but then, what a blessing. And then the gift that it gives that it gives me. That it gives you. Yeah. And that was surprising to me. Yeah. Like I it gave me it gave me more strength than I realized. I That's had, great. Yeah. You know, and it yeah. gave me in many ways the strength to do this work because it yeah. is filled with mm-hmm. terror. But when you're faced with. <laughs> The option. Literally of, life and death. Yeah. 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 Then, you know. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Less, Dude, uh, but when you got here today, you I, loved thought, him? I thought I loved you and I thought you were really cool. Now? Now? You know what? We're changing seats. I beyond Kiff, love you Kiff and I think you're the now. coolest. Well, thank you. Like, that's there's amazing. nobody like Kiff. Well, you guys. Okay. This is going to be answered as you. Uh, remember that whole thing about killing <laughs> with a knife? Yes. Here we are. All right, I'm going to kill this with a knife. You can pick it All yourself. Right. All right, I'm not looking. All right, That'd go. be funny if you got one of them. There you go. Oh, see, everyone gets what they're supposed to. Have you ever acted on anything from a dream? Ever acted on anything from a dream? No. You're a liar. No. <laughs> no, because 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 the 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 dream of of doing this. I know that right? like you are. So like, but like from, from sleeping dream, that's like, that's like Sasquatches and, yeah, yeah. and you know, hanging out with, you know, Robert Redford <laughs> driving around and Harvey Keitel. What about your dream of you but in like, the car? Yeah. Yeah. And then you hang out with the guy. I know. You acted out on that, although you could have talked to him a little bit more. Very disappointed in you. I talked to him. It's surprising. <laughs> the amount of, the amount of stuff I got a hug. I got a hug and a handshake. He got a hug when yeah. he could have a, lot of, a car yeah. ride in the convertible. That night, that that Harrison Ford night. Yeah. Like, it happened my first year in here, in, in Los oh, Angeles. No. Oh, no. And, like, it was the kind of thing, like, here you go. Like, I had three national campaigns running when we moved here. I had representation. And the work went away. Because that's what jobs do. They mm-hmm. end. So, and I didn't have savings. It was the first time I'd had like significant money and a new car and great clothes and all the stuff. And uh, and that speaks to the variety because I didn't want to find myself in that situation again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's part of the reason why I'm always teaching because mm-hmm. teaching is good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, um, that that Harrison Ford thing happened like right before Christmas, and it was it was a. It was the kind of thing that when you're driving home from it and you go, um, and I've had this several times with different different experiences in town where you go, oh, I wish, I wish so-and-so was here to experience that. But then going, no, 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 no. It was for you. Take it. Mm-hmm. This meant something. This changed something for you. This gave you a gift that you didn't expect. And and you, you deserve this gift, so take it. And yeah. enjoy it and like you know it's given me a story it's given me one of the best things that Harrison Ford said to me that really helped was you know I'd done that whole thing about the you know the oh you teach voiceover blah 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 mm. blah and he said um, did I tell you this part of the story I don't think so someone said he said oh, well, how do you teach voiceover and I said oh uh, it's like That's I'm so like good. Richard Attenborough in Jurassic Park saying uh uh, welcome to voiceover. Mm. And he said, someone should teach a class about what happens when you get on set. That'd be a class I'd like to see. And I was like, okay, Mr. Set, what's your what's your curriculum for that class? And he went, uh, I don't know. About 20 minutes later, apropos of nothing, he leans across the table from me and he goes, here's the thing that no one understands about this business. This is a service industry. 
and we are in service to the existential truth of the story. That's our job. And no one is bigger than that. Mm. So if you want to teach a class about that, that's what you teach. You teach chasing that truth. I love that. Right? That was good. No, and you didn't say that before, by the way. You left out the best part of the freaking story. I know. No, I was busy. I was I'm pretty was glad that we kind of went around circle here. It's a nice place that. to come back to. He finished the story. There Very you go. Good. But like that, yeah. that idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as I think, too, as someone who does a lot of matching, like it's important to bear in mind. I don't, I'm not embarrassed by the fact that I do the, the volume of people that I do or that I work in that space. And I don't. Embarrassed is the wrong word, um, but but you know what I mean. Like it's not that I, I'm not I'm not trying to hide it from people mm -hmm. in that way of like oh no I don't want Sam Elliott to know that I did him. Um, You're helping him out sometimes. The, the existential <laughs> truth of the story is yeah. that this character is accomplishing this goal, mm -hmm. and Sam's not available. He's over here doing mm -hmm. it. So if I got someone who can give a a T sound and a grunt or a fight or a uh, an exertion to complete that story, yeah. well then. I'm Amen like the, I'm the stunt guy taking the fall. That's yeah. beautiful, man. You know, so yeah. it's for, it's, I, I you know it. what? I've actually you're great. I've people, gotten man. so much good stuff from people. you today, thank man. You. I mean, thank, thank you, so, you much. so much for sharing. Dude, my pleasure. What a freaking cool so guy, much. man. Well, that concludes our two part episode with our good buddy Chris. <laughs> oh I can't God. say yeah. I can't say yeah. Kiff. <laughs> Why, Carlito? Just say, just say Kiffy. Kiffy, Kiffy Van Dyke, Van Dyke Hugo. You. <laughs> you. <laughs> Sorry, you, you go. I want to say Van Halen. Van Halen. Chip Van Halen. You didn't oh. say Van Halen. This That's is fine. embarrassing. Oh. You are in timeout, Chuck. Oh my God. <laughs> oh. Van Den Heuvel. Van Den Heuvel. Why can't I, I say that? I can't breathe. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> pick up. Uh, by the way, this has never happened. Yes. Uh, but this, I is love this is all staying in. <laughs> this is all staying in. This is staying in. All right. That Frank. concludes our two Wait. part episode. <laughs> okay, ready? Here we go. Hey, uh, let's do it. Well, that concludes our two part episode <laughs> with the awesome <laughs> Kift Vanden Heuvel. <laughs> Nailed it. And, and yes. And you'll see the blooper to know why I can't compose myself. <laughs> we love Kiff and Newell, Chuck. We yes, do. We love him a you lot. You love him too. Follow all of us on social. Thank you so much for watching these shenanigans. Um, you guys, just remember. You, you always, always have, have time, time for a little buzz. With Kiff and Newell. Hi, I'm Kiff and Newell, and I just got buzzed. And here's a final tip for you. If it ain't rough, it ain't right. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.